What is up, guys? Scott would never hedge, and uh, we are just about to uh, get get rolling with the Emacs uh, Telegram AMA. Uh, so I am going to shut up, and we're going to get to that right now. Who heard uh, the introduction that I had about Matt? But I will I'll do it again. So Matt, um, also known as Vanquish, he's going to be joining us tonight. Me and Geo, you guys are familiar with our, our voices, our faces. Uh, Matt has a really strong IT background, security, internet development, things of that nature. Uh, we brought him on the team about three weeks ago to assist with overall operations um, and especially um, oversight of the development team, you know, just to make sure that we're um, hitting our promises, staying on timelines, things of that nature. Um, he's really been helping us get organized, you know, and put together, you know, a top-notch team across multiple departments. Um, so that's my, my quick spiel about Matt. But Matt, you know, hopefully I didn't take too much. If you want to, you know, give a brief instruction of yourself as a hi to the Emacs community. Hey, guys. Uh, thank you for uh, the introduction, Steve. Yeah, I, I, I was brought on about three weeks ago. Um, my job here is to help get everything organized. I'm uh, staying on top of the development team. Um, and, and other departments, making sure everyone's, you know, working together and, and we're staying on track here, uh, meeting our deadlines, uh, mainly for the community and for our holders. Cool, Matt. I speak on behalf of the Emacs community when we say welcome. Um, so let's get right into it. We have a lot of stuff to go over. So uh, just in terms of some uh, recaps from last week and just progress that we've been making, um, as promised, we have launched a new AMA feature on our website, ethereummax.org. Um, if you go to that, you'll see a red banner on the left-hand side of the website. It's a vertical banner, or you can scroll all the way down to the bottom. And this way, you are able to submit your question via audio. Um, so it's really cool. So towards the end of this um, this broadcast, we're going to have some questions that were actually submitted by the community. So, you know, I think this is an amazing initiative that we're doing because it really gets the community involved in so many different levels. Um, secondly, uh, recently we posted a form on our website. Um, as, you know, the Emacs community knows, we continued to um, uh, further develop and talk about our payment processing systems that we're um, just continuing to develop. And, you know, throughout this process, we've been getting a lot of requests from businesses around, honestly, the world in terms of wanting to take um, Emacs and get a head start. So long story short, what we did is we created a form, uh, which is on our website and on our social media platforms, where we will be capturing core business information, such as, you know, their business name, website, demographics, things of that nature, uh, to make sure that we set them up properly, um, you know, when we're rolling it out. And, um, you know, we will be sending out um, uh, business kits, which that is a, a, a first announcement here, but we're, we will be sending out business kits for businesses that sign up to accept Emacs as a form of payment. So um, a lot, you know, I'm sure we'll have a weekly update on that because there's a lot of uh, information behind that. Um, next on the list in terms of last week, which was really cool, was uh, the Gervonta Davis and Mario fight recap, uh, which is awesome. Um, Gio was lucky enough to uh, be there in person. Um, it was obviously well, for those who saw, it was an amazing fight. But, you know, Gio, you know, I'll let you take this one in terms of uh, the Davis fight. Yeah, no, uh, you know, yet another uh, another great fight uh, that we, we got to, um, you know, really incorporate uh, the, the entire brand, the entire community. And, and you know, taking uh, payment uh, again for the fight was great. We were able to showcase some of our new technology. Uh, the website, uh, the, the actual fight ticket website where, you know, you can see some of the improvements we've made where we're you know, really starting to showcase uh, the technology we've been working on for the last few weeks to months. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, it's been uh, leaps and bounds better uh, than I think what we saw in the prior uh, uh, Mayweather uh, event. And the, the, the event itself was just amazing. Uh, I think uh, anyone who saw the fight saw just a super exciting fight. Uh, Javante Davis, this upcoming uh, star, absolute superstar. Uh, you know, the knockout was uh, was pretty amazing. We we walked up. We had you know we had the the logo, uh, and I think you know just the presence at the arena it was it was it was great. Connecting with a lot of a lot of fans, a lot of uh, community members who were actually at the fight. So that was uh, that was a lot of fun, and you know we look forward to. You know, to really continuing to, to, to kind of grow into other events, um, you know, that, that we've been uh, we've been working on kind of behind the scenes. So more to come uh, on that front. But but yeah, just another uh, another successful event it was great. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, not too often where you see the actual champion as the underdog. But uh, yeah, Javante Davis was, was actually favored in that fight. And um, something else exciting about that, we actually all of the tickets that we had for Emacs, actually we sold out of them. 
um, which is, you know, yeah. impressive. Plus, the super, super cool thing is that anyone who bought with Emacs actually got signed gloves, which is some definitely some deep insider stuff. Yeah, just the, the, the kind of experience and rewards that, uh, you know, we continue to uh, want to roll out and provide to our, our community and our members. So uh, just be on the lookout for for future uh, experiences and, and, and other, um, you know, memorabilia like that, but uh, a lot more to come. Yeah, why I don't have a pair of gloves, I don't know, but I guess we'll speak about that on the side. <laughs> um secondly so this this morning was super sad you know just you know from a macro standpoint the, the market in general has been down especially from you know bitcoin and ethereum but you know over the past two days there's certainly been a little bit of an uptick in the market and um you know emacs has certainly been uh, a recipient of that with that you know we were trending number one on dex tools this morning yet again uh you know we've been on the top five almost every single week since launching so uh giovanni you know you know, I think we talk about it almost weekly, but I'm not sure if you want to, you know, touch upon that at all. It's, you know, just yeah, and it, of course. And, and yeah, I think again, I, we, we've talked about this in the past and I think it just goes to show, you know, how sophisticated our, uh, our community is, uh, you know, obviously text tools, uh, I think just one of the, you know, more, uh, higher level platforms, uh, you know, with the full order book and, you know, a, a lot of other analytics that some of the other sites just don't, uh, have, uh, so I think just seeing uh, Emacs constantly in the top five and, you know, this week kind of, you know, in the top kind of two, three spots and uh, number one uh, for most of the day today, that, that that's exciting to see. I know everybody's, uh, you know, everybody's kind of out checking kind of what's going on. So I, I think just, you know, big things to, to continue to come uh, for us. And yeah, do you agree with that? Though. I think I definitely think going forward too, we got a lot of, a lot of cool things in the pipeline. Um, and, and just based off of that, I think we're going to see this a lot more often than not. Absolutely. Yeah, I was gonna say, hopefully it doesn't come off as like a, I don't know, overly confident statement, but like, you know, I don't know. I feel like, you know, we're, you know, we're in meetings all day with, with these guys. And I mean, honestly, we haven't even started with what we really like have and, and plan for the future. So, you know, if we're turning number one now, uh, not sure what's, what's ahead of that, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that um, the community's going to be happy with what we're, what we're rolling out. Um, Steve, I 100% agree yeah. with you on that one. Yeah, and then just the, the the one thing that I think excites me about that that number one ranking and constantly in the top five is you know it's really just uh, you know that's a that's a community driven thing and it's it's how many people are you know kind of clicking and checking uh, you know on Emacs and kind of what the uh, what the quotes are and kind of how how everything's looking on the uh, on the order book and things like that and you know those are things that you know some of the the, the exchanges and other things kind of take notice of so you know we definitely have uh, a lot of plans. Uh, on that front to, to obviously get, uh, you know, get involved and get, get uh, opened on larger exchanges. And, you know, I think those exchanges are taking notice. So, uh, so I think that's exciting and um, definitely a precursor of things to come. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. So let's keep things going. So, um, you know, the community knows we've been making a big push just to listen more. Uh, the AMAs, the recorded, um, the recorded questions. So in addition to that, we're going to start answering questions um, on Reddit, uh, we're going to host um, AMAs on that platform. Um, just so, so where everyone knows that's a little bit different is um, it's not going to necessarily be live. These are going to be questions that are answered directly um, in text form by our development team. So we'll be rolling this out in probably like the next like week or two. But the way that this format will work is, um, you know, community members will post their questions and then um, the community will upvote the questions that they think are best. And we'll pick a select time during the week to go about answering those questions uh, in a more organized and productive way. So um, I guess what I would give the community in terms of, of advice is make sure that your questions are, you know, articulated well, they're easy to understand, um, you know, easy to understand by all, you know, read it twice before hit and send. And, um, you know, I'm sure if it's a concern or a question or something that needs to be answered and other people could also relate with that, you know, it'll get upvoted and it will get answered directly by one of our developers. Um, so now we yeah, can see I think. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I think this in tandem with, with these, you know, live AMAs, um, it will be great because I know a lot of people are going to ask, you know, a lot of common questions that they want answered, and then we'll be able to address those questions in a little bit more of an organized way. Um, so we get those out of the way, you know, we, we want to be able to address all these questions. And I think, you know, by upvoting the ones that are the most popular, we'll get a lot of those answered for you guys. Um, and, you know, that's our ultimate goal. Yep, for sure. And it's it just, you know, it's, you know, our community is growing. We have you know, 107,000 you know, people. So imagine how many of those have questions. Um, even if it's 1%, right. It's over, it's over, you know, um, a thousand. So that's, that's a lot of questions. 
Um, so the, you know, we think all these, you know, the voice, the AMAs, the Reddit, it's all, it's all collectively to strengthen the community. Um, <clears throat> that's it. So in terms of another one of our community initiatives is we recently released um, community guidelines um, across our platforms in terms of just, you know, uh, not necessarily rules, just guidelines in terms of, you know, what you can, what you cannot say. Um, just in, uh, what this really comes down to is just we have such an amazing community, a strong community, a close knit community, and we want we're protective of them. So we want to make sure that we strengthen the community. And you know, every now and then there are uh, people who are just you know rude or out of line, and eh, that's not okay. And so we are um, you know uh, take this wholeheartedly. The, the, these guidelines that we are implementing is to protect the community, to educate the community, and make sure that um, you know everyone that wants to engage can do so in a very um, welcoming environment. Um, so something that I just want to make people aware of, um, simply because people have in their, um, their username, uh, will not DM first or something along those lines, uh, you know, doesn't in and of itself make, make them an admin, uh, or a moderator. Um, so we, we, we really want to push, um, you know, a, a community movement to keep the community in and of itself safe. Um, so let's just be mindful of that. Something else that we rolled out, um, last week was we implemented a new warns feature. Um, so, you know, depending on what. Uh, guideline is broken. Uh, there could be you could get a, an official warning, or honestly, you could just be banned depending on, on, on the severity of it. Um, however, you know we, we are trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. We're certainly very far from 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 ban happy. Um, you know we want to make this a very uh, opening, uh, open, uh, communicative environment. And honestly, even if it's tough questions, ask those questions. But there's a difference between that and intentionally starting drama. I won't get too far down that rabbit hole because I spent enough time there during the weeks. Long story short. We're doing this for the community. We now have a new warn feature. Um, in general, just a side note, me personally, I am slow to respond to DMs. If you have sent me something and you haven't got a response, don't take it personal. Um, that's it. I'm just slow with some so that stuff sometimes. Um, lastly, we also um, recently released uh, moderator guidelines. So just, just so the community knows our, our, our stance about honestly being fair uh, across the board, it's not just the community members that, you know, we are holding to a, a certain standard. It's also our moderators. Um, and we're going to also make those public too, just so everybody knows um, the guidelines that the moderators are expect to, expected to uh, work within. Um, you know, just with, you know, staying in line with the concept of DeFi, we want to be extremely transparent uh, and very forthcoming with what we're doing, what our expectations expectations are because you know the way we see this evolving is it's a self-driven token i mean this is a community driven token and you know for us to do that it's our it's our job we feel to set up the framework and then you know let, let, the, let the community really drive it and grow from there um that said more up, uh, from last week we talked about the uh, merch store so we are continuing to design the merch store what we're doing next in terms of involving the community is we're going to design a bunch of custom t-shirts and zip ups and, um, you know, let's say like, I don't know, eight or 10 of them. And we're actually going to send it out to the community to vote. So we're going to leave it in your hands, which ones we should actually produce. So you should be expecting those in the next, um, the next week or two. Um, this is obviously a Telegram chat, but for those of you across multiple platforms, uh, we had a bunch of winners on Discord. We uh, Emacs has been doing uh, giveaways on Discord, um, and to be honest with you, like the the moderators in and themselves that have been pretty giving and um, generous with uh, spearheading a lot of those. Uh, so we've been giving away uh, Emacs and gift cards, and just we gave over over six billion tokens away just in the last few days. So if you're interested in getting involved, uh, join our giveaway channel on Discord. Um, Vanquish, I know you're, you're you're pretty active on Discord. So I don't know if you have anything to, to, add, to add. Yeah, so we've been doing it. Actually, I, I had a giveaway. Um, we did like a small one. I, I personally sponsored what was hundred dollars worth of Emacs. Um, I know. I think another mod in there sponsored a. Uh, I believe it was like a three billion. Um, three billion Emacs giveaway. But we're doing them on a regular basis now. So if you guys want to get involved in that, yeah, definitely join the uh, Discord. Uh, there's a giveaway channel where you can just use the uh, emojis and then enter these giveaways pretty easily so you'll see a lot of those coming down the pipeline um just kind of keep the community involved and you know they're kind of fun to do so um yeah definitely join the discord get in one of those so for, for those who aren't like really familiar with discord like matt what do you mean by like use an emoji 
to, 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 to so upload. in the giveaway channel when you when you when you enter the giveaway channel i'll give you instructions on that screen it'll ask you to click a you know a certain emoji and by clicking that it, it gives you a entry into that giveaway so it's relatively easy you just got to get in the discord click the giveaway channel and then it will tell you hey you know there's a giveaway running just click the uh you know like the smiley face emoji and you'll get an you'll get a message confirming that you've been entered into that giveaway cool i mean and let's be honest people if you can't get on the internet and submit an emoji i mean you probably don't belong on the internet so <laughs> i have faith in that you could do this on discord to, to, to get it surprise. um so cool so, so throughout the week we have um i don't want to call them random calls but you know uh, telegram is a great platform to have uh consistent chats all the time um just open dialogue uh, voice chats so we actually got asked by a community member um you know how can the community actually help emacs and i thought that was such a great like selfless question i didn't really speak volume about you know our community so I'm just thinking about that and speaking with the team, you know, um, helping to expand our reach is always appreciative. So, and that comes in a lot of forms, obviously just, you know, communicating to your friends and families that, that that's, that's always a benefit, you know, also, you know, how can we get more involved in the crypto community? Uh, do you know, YouTubers, do you know, influential people, do you know, people who like could actually like make a difference in, in, um, the crypto community, things of that, things of that nature. Um, so the more, you know, resources that you're able to point us in the right direction. And to be honest with you, even if it's an idea, like it's like, don't be shy to submit an idea to us um, simply because, you know, you may not have that connection. Um, some of the best direct messages that I do get, honestly, to be very honest with you, are like good ideas. And I, I, I tell everyone frequently, like, you know, you don't, you're not bothering me. Don't apologize. It's, it, you know, you, you can, you can submit, honestly, like, seven silly ideas and then you can submit one idea that that's completely a home run and changes the trajectory of emacs like so we want to make this a very collaborative environment so um you know if you have ideas if you have influencers if you have people who you think would really move this this, to this token forward to a different level uh, which we're going already but if you could help us get there in, a, in faster you know lay it on us um you know it's very community driven so i don't know geo or you know matt if you have anything to add to that in terms of how you guys feel the community um can actually help emacs yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, go ahead. No, no I was going to say, go ahead, Matt. You go. I'll, uh, I'll go last. Yeah, I was, was going to say, you know, it comes yeah, in, in, in go a little bit. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Steve. Um, but yeah, no, that comes with, you know, governance and things like that, voting on on what we do next. Um, I think that's going to be incorporated pretty soon. So, uh, but don't, I mean, don't hesitate to, to message us. Uh, I'm not very active on Telegram. I, I, I came here to do the, uh, the AMA, but, you know, you can find me on Discord probably more often than not. But I mean, yeah, don't don't hesitate. If you have a great idea, reach out to us. Let us know. I mean, I'm reading, people are PMing me right now and, I, and I'm, I'm reading these. So, yeah, guys. Definitely, definitely reach out to us and, and, and let us know your ideas. We're definitely interested in hearing them. Stop multitasking, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And I, <laughs> yeah, and I, I just add, uh, you know, on the vendor front, you know, and the, and the, and the transaction uh, kind of services where uh, we've had a number uh, of, of individuals reach out to us, ask how to, uh, you know how to incorporate Emacs payments into their business. Uh, it's been it's been actually pretty great, uh, and we we've had actually a number of calls. Uh, you know, with a couple different uh, different people who had reached out to us, and and you know, there's a there's actually a really good idea, uh, which I won't really kind of give give the full idea away, but it was a really really cool idea for kind of a cutting edge uh, you know type event space that. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking with, um, you know, some guys who had reached out, uh, and again, that's just kind of the, the example of, of people reaching out, kind of fitting, figuring out if it's something that might fit with Emacs. And, you know, these were actually, uh, holders of Emacs and just kind of had this idea. They reached out to us through a, you know, kind of personal connection. Uh, and the next thing you know, we're, you know, it could, could actually be something that, uh, works out and we're interested in so you know those are the type of things that you know we're, we're we have ears open uh we're, we're always willing to listen to uh to different opportunities and you know it's just uh, this can go in so many different directions so the more the more ideas the better so that's that's kind of where we are yep can i agree more and you know if you do submit something and you don't get either a response or it's like just an okay idea don't get discouraged you know keep submitting ideas um you know that's, that's what this community is all about um, so as we shared on our last AMA, um, so what we're going to start doing with these AMAs 
is we're just going to diversify them a little bit more. You can see that we brought Matt in, and um, we're going to start just having a, a, a little bit of a, of a stronger focus on the tech end of it, the tokenomics, um, development features, things of that nature. Because you know we, we have a, a diverse community, which makes our community great. You know, there's some really you know hardcore crypto heads who you know they want to know about the, the contract address, they want to know about the tokenomic details, uh, and then you know you have people who you know just want to make sure that their wallet go up, and you also have people who aren't even really sure how to buy to put it in their wallet you know what i mean so it's it's we're trying to speak to a very broad audience uh, but that said we do feel that being driven primarily by the technology the development the utility things of that nature um is really going to put emacs into a uh, different stratosphere um so that said yes i agree in the, in the near future that we're gonna definitely have some 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 great things coming so uh just yeah go ahead sorry to interrupt you i keep doing that no, no. Listen, this whole this whole thing's live, and we even spoke about this prior. Like, there's going to be a lot of collaboration. We're going to speak over each other. Yeah, no one needs to apologize. I think we're all excited to to to, to get to get to get the stuff out there for the community. So, nothing, nothing but love. Um, but Matt's going to be a big part of that. So, um, you know, that said, let's we'll, we'll get into some questions from our community. These ones were submitted via um, just via text, and we'll get into some of the voice ones. Um, so, the very first one I thought was a really like. I don't know, like very, like, why the hell, why don't we have this already type of thing? Um, so it was, uh, can we extract data from the Emacs tokenomics for holders to monitor the real time progress data increases of the rewards? Um, so, like, just to simplify, so for example, like, how much have I earned in redistribution over the past month? I mean, I would love that. Like, um, people are taking screenshots, trying to do freaking, you know, arithmetic and math. I got seven whiteboards in my office. It's, it's complicated. So, Matt, help us out. How, how are we going to make this easier? Yeah, so we discussed this, um, and I think, you know, the only thing holding this up right now is the tokenomics, um, which we're actively, obviously, you guys know we're working on. Uh, if you're following the GitHub, you can see that. Uh, but I think uh, going forward, we're looking at rebuilding the website in a Web3, uh, using the front end as like a React, uh, React framework, and then being able to connect our wallets directly to that. And then at that time, you could see your, you know, your current balances with, you know, reflection, um, how much you've earned, um, you know, if we do end up, uh, you know, uh, doing the staking we can figure out you know how much you staked and how much you're earning um and then we're gonna have apps throughout the website where you you know you hit these subdomains and you can you can pull these up so there's a lot of neat and exciting features coming um this is definitely on the roadmap and with that being said we we have some some big modifications coming to that roadmap that will be published shortly so yeah i mean this is definitely doable um and this is something that i think we need to put out there sooner than later yeah, I mean, I, I think I speak for everyone on the call. I, I, I mean, the community where, if, you know, there was some type of, I don't know if you call it wallet, app, website, you know, I don't want to be held to that, but where you can see um, how you're progressing, how much you earned last week. I mean, that's, that is kick-ass. That, that'd, be, that'd be super cool. So, uh, yeah, my vote for that. Um, now, obviously, the big one, um, you know, everyone has been asking about these tokenomics. Um, you know, I understand from the back end, they've been complicated. The development teams have been working on them. Um, you know, let's just cut to the chase, though. So, you know, what exactly is the status of the three by three? Um, Matt, you know, Geo, can you guys share with us, you know, progress, timing, news, et cetera? Like, where exactly are we? Yeah. For... No, go ahead, Matt. Uh, you, you've been close to the release. So why don't you like, take us out on that? Matt? All right, I, I don't know if we lost Matt, but, uh, but why is your your muted? Yeah, not sure if Matt Matt's muted there, but I, I I can take us out on that one. So yeah, I mean, obviously we uh, we came out with the uh, the six percent um, uh, redistribution uh, with, with the plan to move uh, that down to three and, and, and introduce the burn. Uh, you know that's something that we're we're working toward. It's it's, it's very close, uh, and and you know from what I understand, in the next uh, you know sometime this week we should be able to have uh, the the burn piece out. Uh, so it'll it'll move to that three by three uh, with you know a, a future release following that. So uh, we're very excited to finally come out with the burn piece. We think that's uh, that's an important um, kind of kind of transition uh, after doing that one time burn. Uh, a few weeks ago, so um, we're, we're we're nearly there. Very exciting, and uh, um, you know, handful of days we should uh, be able to get that out. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah, Matt just texted me that his uh, his Telegram app crashed because what better time when, than when speaking about the three by three? You just literally cannot make this up. <laughs> so, 
So, uh, so as Gina was saying, I mean, Matt can speak about this. Definitely the um, the best. But good news is the the three percent burn is finalized in the final stages um, of testing. We actually wanted to have it ready for tonight, but we didn't want to um, rush it. But uh, for those uh, development and um, uh, crypto heads out there, you can see a lot of the progress on uh, on GitHub. And you know we're just waiting waiting that internal audit, but it will be um, deployed this week. So that's that's you know probably one of our our, our, our biggest updates that we um, you know we're 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 there with with with, with the three by three. Uh, I don't think Matt's still on yet. So next question from the community is: Is there any correlation to the burn functionality of the tokenomics uh, and the token price? Yeah, so I, I can take that again. So I mean, obviously, as the uh, as the supply uh, goes down, that that's that's kind of the whole concept behind the burn. Uh, you know, the, the the price will uh, will increase over time. Uh, and you know, I think when we did uh, the one time burn itself, that's also going to be incorporated into uh, reducing the 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 actual uh, circulating supply. Uh, on the ether scan so we, we, we've reached out to ether scan to get that uh, that one-time burn quantity uh, removed from the circulating supply that'll also uh, you know result in a, in a nice bump in price so so yeah there's definitely a, a correlation there and and you know obviously over time that'll uh, that'll have you know some sort of decay uh, you know to some terminal value but um, but yes that, that that's kind of you know one of the main kind of concepts around it well, yeah, and you know, as we've shared before, Geo on you know previous calls, you know, burning in and of itself has you know is deflationary by nature. So, um, you know, the, the two are certainly obviously very um, closely correlated. Um, cool. So as we um, wait for Matt, we are going to get into what I'm super excited about is um, these voice recordings. So, you know, like we shared, um, if you guys have a uh, question that you want to ask, you want you want to hear your voice heard, um, go to our website. Uh, click on uh, the AMA button. Again, it's going to be the left banner, uh, top left on a red vertical, red vertical banner, or you go to the bottom of our website. So, Bob, Bob T is our very first one. So, let's see what Bob has to say. Bob's about to play. Some Bob there. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry. Telegram, uh, Telegram just shut down the PC, so. Oh, good. We're, we're waiting on Bob right now uh, for his yeah, question. <laughs> there he is. Hi. Oh, oh, there you go. So, Matt, before I play Bob, we did speak about um, the three by three. Yeah, I know you definitely got out at a very inopportune time. Uh, Gio was able to take a, a lot of it in terms of it being uh, released this week, but I'm not sure if you want to give a quick synopsis of um, just an update of the three by three. Yeah, so where we stand on the three by three, um, it's been finalized. We are just waiting on an internal audit. Um, we never release code or contract updates without, you know, a couple eyes on it. So um, you see, I'm sure most of you guys saw the GitHub, so you saw the updates coming through there. Uh, they're just re redoing, uh, reviewing the uh, pull request right now, which will uh, hopefully be done here in the next day or so. Um, so we will be launching the 3% burn this week. Um, and that's a, that's a for sure thing. Um, I don't know how far you got, I don't know how far you got Gio. I, I kind of was excited to announce that one. And, and as soon as I went to speak, it just, it shut me down. So I apologize guys. Well, I, I did, I did say it would happen this week. So we're, uh, oh, geez. All right, cool. we're putting, we're putting a, a timeline out there and we're sticking to it. So, uh, so yes, a very, very exciting stuff. We are aligned. All right. Let's go. Yes. Bob, guys, if I lose you, if I lose you here, I'm just going to jump on my phone because I don't know what's going on with the PC. So just a heads up. We got it. Okay, here we go, Bob. Hi, I had purchased Emacs product as a fork, and what I'm hearing is to pretty much leave it alone, and it should convert on its own. Or do I need to do something with it? Please let me know. Thank you, Bob T. 
Well, thank you, Bob. Uh, so, yeah, one of our favorite questions. I, I, I didn't think we'd be asked that again uh, after we, we, we've been asked that quite some time when we actually did the fork. Um, but, but yeah, just... Uh, you know, like we've kind of gone through this and, you know, that, that, that question has been asked, uh, you know, a ton of times, uh, you know, so, so the beauty of the fork, even though it did, uh, cause a little bit of confusion, which, you know, thankfully I think, you know, most, uh, most users are through now at this point. Um, but, but yeah, there was nothing that really needed to be done. There was no conversion or anything like that. There was a, uh, an airdrop, uh, of those, uh, of, of your pre-fork position into the new, uh, into the new Emacs backed by the, uh, the new fully flexible smart contract and um and and yeah that should all be done at this point so you should be good uh obviously if there's any issues please let us know but um uh, you know nothing was really needed to be done everything was airdropped and you should be good to go nice um, our next question in the community is coming from tony hey how you guys doing this is tony from new york um I'm, I'm an investor, got a lot of money with yours, but my question is, these whales, they'd be dumping and dumping and dumping. I know you, you said the post that you were going to do something about the whales, but as of yet, I ain't seen much done. So my question for you is for Geo, Steve, and the rest of the guys, what are we going to do about these whales? Yo, Tony, I don't even know you, but... I love you, Tony. You're great. <laughs> Tony. So, yeah, I'll take this one. Um, so, so basically what happens with these whales is, you know, they, they get in early. Um, so they, they, they can dump at any time. That's, that's really the problem we're seeing. It's, it's whales that got in really early and they're, they're taking profits. Um, with that being said, the 9% tax, uh, with our tokenomics is, is gonna it's gonna hurt them a little bit here so you know big dumps buys and sells you'll see a lot less of that because they're gonna have to pay nine percent you know each way on that so hopefully that um you know when those are implemented and and finalized you'll see a lot less you know you know buys and sells within a short period of time um but there's nothing really really we can do about the you know the big dumps that come you know as the price goes up and it's it's not like a buy and sell within like a you know x amount of period of time uh, but hopefully, you know, like I said, tokenomics will, will matter in this in this aspect. And going forward, we should see a little bit less of that. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, Matt. I mean, obviously, the the one one of the main um, you know kind of drivers of the tokenomics, right? That whole optimization that we went through was to incentivize buying, holding, and really disincentivize selling. Uh, we want uh, holders to kind of grow as we grow with the community and. You know the, the the ins and outs and all the the, the the day trading stuff. I think it disrupts some of that uh, some of that growth that we we, we want to see uh, for everybody. So yeah, the, the nine percent on on ins and outs definitely uh, will uh, reduce. I think some of that day trading and some of the you know the the, the I guess the interest to trade in the short term. Uh, you know by by dumping positions and you know look, I I think we've all kind of seen it and you know we've all seen it and and, and, and had some of those. Uh, those those selling into rallies, uh, but you know I think the good news is a lot of those uh, larger holders have been uh, you know kind of uh, got, they, they, they've they've uh, ran out of bullets right they've ran out of ammunition uh, there are still some out there but you know I think at the end of the day uh, we're we're getting to a point where uh, you know there's just not as many out there uh, a lot of those early uh, holders who did uh, you know cause some some um, I think issues uh, on the way up. Uh, like I said, they're 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 kind of out of ammunition, and I think we're uh, you know we're, we're we're reaching a place with with the new tokenomics that you'll see a lot less of that. Yep. Yeah, well said, guys. But just being in the uh, you know a DeFi ecosystem, you know, there's you know. It's, you know, there's only so much we can do in terms of keeping play fair. And I think this 9% tax is going to uh, make whales think twice before um, buying and selling. It's really, really hard to, um, even people who are out there with stocks, it's really hard to, to day trade with a 9% tax. I mean, that's, yeah. not, that's not fun. I agree, Steve. And then some of this is like, you know, we can't control. So, I mean, you know, whale mitigation, whatever you may call it, um, I don't think it's needed at this time. Um, and I think, you know, going forward, you know, like the tokenomics, like we said, it w will definitely help. Um, even if it's in a minor, minor way, you know, it's better, you know, than not having any kind of, you know, you know, effects in place. Yep. I agree. Yeah, Tony, you're allowed to sub submit one question a week if you would like. That was great. Um, <laughs> next one is from Steven. 
Hey guys, Stephen from New Jersey. Uh, one question that I see frequently on Telegram is, um, is there a public list of addresses um, that uh, from the devs and um, from the original lock so we can actually see that the tokens are locked? There's lots of questions in regards to the addresses that were previously given to us um, that for whatever reason, they, they do not show locked. The same we're, we're limited to 30 seconds. But that's why I got cut off. Um, but go ahead, Matt, if you want to take that one. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, we, yeah, we did lock on Unicrypt. Uh, those addresses, if you just look us up in the Uniswap pool on that uh, Unicrypt, you can see that if you look up Emacs, you'll see that there's, uh, I believe it's 16 addresses locked up right now. Yes. Um, yep. So you can, and, you know, also we were thinking about here on the update on the website, when we go to the Web3 and, and React, we're going to have a link and more integration where it shows like the locked wallets in some kind of widget. Uh, I think short term, we're going to do that as well, uh, along with the uh, exchanges that we're on. So you should see those updates on the website uh, by the end of this week, um, including the locked wallets and the uh, you know official listing of exchanges. Cool. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm really, I'm really loving this whole this voice recording thing. Um, and I hope you guys, you know, we're not, we're not, you know, cherry picking questions. That's a, that's a, a tough question about, like, you know, what well, have you guys locked that wallet? So we're, we're, we will get that up on the the website. So to to um, show transparency. So that that's a great question. Um, next one is from Kamal. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if. Uh, Emacs can be launched in pancake swap as well because the gas in Uniswap is too high and um, we're just giving away too much to them, you know? So probably that is hampering the growth as well. So yeah, please look into this. Thank you. Matt, you want to take this? Okay, I'm gonna set up a GoFundMe so we can get Matt a new PC, guys. So I'll let you know when. The, when all right, that went. all right, I'm back. I, I gave up on the PC. I'm back. I, I'm on the phone. Right. Right, I'm on the phone. I heard the question. I know it was uh, regarding the pancake swap. So let me answer that. Uh, so it, pancake swap, I would say, is less secure. Um, it's not our platform of choice. You know mostly due to security. Uh, the fees would be cheaper, yes, but uh, with the DRM 2.0 around the corner the, with the lower gas fees, uh, I, I believe the ETH network is still the best choice as it has, uh, you know, like one of the largest liquidity pools, as we all know. Um, so, the, you know, we would not, we prefer not to create a BSC token um, with ETH 2.0 right, right around the corner. <laughs> is, um, is security a feature too? Is like, is like, is, is the ERC, you know, Ethereum network more secure as well? Yeah, uh, 2.0 will be. Cool. And, and I know the gas fees will be a lot less as well. Yeah, so to give a little sneak peek of next week, without mentioning too much, but we will be going, we will be diving deep into um, uh, Ethereum 1559 proposal, uh, which has to do around um, proposals to lower gas fees. So uh, for those crypto heads who love that stuff to geek out, make sure you definitely join us next week. Um, cool. Next one is from John S. Hey guys, just curious about the, uh, if there's any update on the burn wallet, um, if it's going to be, uh, reflected in the ether scan or the coin market cap, um, you know, platforms, uh, to recognize the burn wallet as a burn wallet. So any tokens sent to there get taken out of the, uh, you know, the, the entire supply, um, so just curious on that. So, yeah, we do have, to answer that question bluntly, we were just waiting on Etherscan to update our ticket status. Um, we're kind of beholden to them to update that and classify the burn wallet and then, you know, update the supply real time. Um, so that is in the, in the works. We've had a ticket open now for, I believe, a week, um, just waiting on a response. And we obviously got to prove who we are and um, we've done all that. So we're just waiting on them to update that uh, status. And once that's done, you, we should have a real real time supply uh, on either scan. Nice. Uh, next question is from Tanya, Tanya R. Hi, my name is Tanya R from California. 
And I was wondering if you guys have plans to get people on TikTok and other platforms involved more with Emacs. Um, for instance, you could use the Emacs song on YouTube and have people do a dance to it or whatever, you know, things like that. I was just wondering if that is in the works. Thank you. Awesome. That's a great question, Tanya. Uh, so, you know, I guess I'll start off, but we, you know, I think we definitely have one hell of a uh, marketing team, but you know, I'm a big believer that we could always be better. And I think TikTok is probably one of our underutilized platforms, just in terms of how, um, you know, the platform is set up in and of itself. Um, so even like tips how you gave there in terms of like in incorporating the song and you know, doing stuff like that to make it go viral is, 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 is awesome. Um, so we did take note of that. We, um, because of that question today, I actually reached out to our team just to see about our involvement on TikTok. So, you know, something that I will say is that if you don't see that improve within the month, make sure you uh, reach out to me and hold me accountable. But I think that's a, that's an awesome idea. And uh, for all you the TikTokers out there, um, you know, you, you know, we mentioned earlier how the community can help. I think that is a great, you know, a great way. You know, TikTok is community driven, just like it is Emacs wise. So if you guys want to make your, uh, your TikTok songs, your, um, actually here you go. We're going to have a contest. Whoever makes the, uh, the best, uh, TikTok video with the Emacs or Emacs song, we will send you, uh, 3 billion tokens. Uh, so make sure you submit those to us. Um, now, I'll actually let's let just you do it. Let's just do it through the website. Submit it through a support ticket on the website, and then we'll just classify those tickets as uh, submissions. So this is this is how we're going to be a community. We're going to listen to Tanya. We got to step it up on TikTok. So Emacs community, you guys are given a challenge to make a TikTok video with Emacs and or the Emacs song. The best one to win. We're going to play that shit live next week, and we are going to send you three billion tokens. That, that is how we roll. <laughs> I like it, Steve. I like it. There we go. And and we did have. You know, pretty early on, uh, it was our second week. We did have Juju Smith Schuster from uh, from the Steelers doing a doing a little song and dance uh, to Emacs. So uh, did have a little presence, but agreed. We we uh, we're going to be working more on the platform and, and, and more stuff to come. Cool. Um, the next question is for from Ross. You know, I had mentioned uh, that Emacs would be participating in some charitable contributions. I um, haven't really seen anything on that in quite a while. I just wanted to ask if that's something that's still planned, and if so, if we could hear anything about it. Thanks. Okay, and, and, one, uh, yeah, for you to take over. Yeah, I could take that. So, yeah, look, I, we, we think, uh, you know, uh, just just discussing charities and understanding which ones we, we want to work with um, are, are very important. And it's not, it's definitely something part of our uh, our culture, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a community and something we want to, uh, you know, make sure is a part of our, uh, our vision going forward. So, you know, we do have uh, an event uh, that I don't want to give away too many details uh about but uh it was one of it's with it's uh kind of with uh one of the athletes that we uh had a had a have a relationship with um that we'll be doing something with and you know a portion of the proceeds uh from that event um you know we're, we're going to be donating uh to you know a big cause so i think that's that's really exciting uh, to come uh, along with a, a couple other things that I think we're thinking about, but, but charities definitely uh, and, and, and contributions and making sure that we can kind of give back, um, you know, that, that that's definitely part of our, uh, our future plans in the, in the near term and, uh, you know, the intermediate and long term. Awesome. That's, that is great to hear. Got a lot of stuff going on. Very, very, a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of irons in the fire. I like this. Um, our, stuff. Next, <laughs> our next one is from David. Does Emacs plan on having any more token burns? David, it's just straight and short, sweet to the point. I like it. Here. Yeah, and uh, right to the point. that one, that's, that's a pretty straightforward. Um, David, right now, uh, we have the burn implementation coming for the tokenomics. Um, we don't have any immediate plans for you know another large, large burn, but that's not to say that that could change um, in the short term. So uh, we got the, the burn tokenomic coming out this week, and then um, 
you know, short term, you know, that's that's the immediate plan. And then, you know, looking long term, we could we could we definitely, you know, look into possibly doing another burn if, if that, you know, if it warrants it or, you know, we need to do that. But, um, yeah, tokenomics burn and then, you know, we'll look into doing a possible burn maybe in the future. Cool. And let me see. Yes, we have one more. Let me see. This one is from Scott. Scott G. What's going on, guys? This is uh, Scott G with the Never Hits Podcast, and I have a question regarding uh, when do you guys think the white papers and uh, coin audit will be done? Uh, if you guys can get to this on the white papers, I know you guys are working pretty hard, but um, got a lot of people wondering about the status of those two things. Uh, so if you could get to those, that would be great. Uh, thanks so much. I'll be listening tomorrow. Yeah, Scott, you appreciate the question. Um, so getting right into this, the white paper, I think, is, you know, when I came on, um, Emacs didn't have a white paper. And to me, that's probably the most important thing, just like all of you are concerned, I was concerned. So uh, we, we dedicated a whole team to do this version one of the white paper. It's in the process now. Um, we, we understand it's, it's extraordinarily important. Uh, we kind of cleaned up our roadmap and, you know, that's going to apply to the version one of this white paper. So I think when it you know comes out, you guys are going to be pretty impressed. Um, we got some, some great, great things on there that I, you know, I, I was, I was a, a decision maker in a lot of these projects and, you know, how we're going to, you know, proceed with the roadmap and, and things like that. And, and when I came in the last three weeks, I'm going to be honest, I've been a whirlwind. Um, but you know, another thing we, we kind of want to, you know, integrate the community with is our roadmap. So, you know, you, you notice, you don't see the roadmap on our website. It's because we're doing an, an interactive one. Um, you know, whether we use like a Trello or like a Monday board, um, we want to, we want to update this real time for you. And you know, you, we want you to be involved and, in, you know, seeing this, you know, you, you come to the website, you can come check it the next day and you can see an update or something's been closed out or, you know, something's being worked on. So our goal is to make it more of a, you know, like a, you know, interactive roadmap, um, using Trello or like a Monday public board. So you can, you'll, we'll, we'll have that up, uh, probably the end of this week. So keep an eye on the website. Uh, we're going to also integrate that into the web three version of our website. So we'll have a, a whole section dedicated to the roadmap, um, and, you know, updates real time for, for our community. Cool. So it's in the works. Um, you know, I have seen some of it. It's it's definitely a different. It's a very well put together format, I guess is, is what I'll say. So, um, you know, as you guys could probably tell from some of our other recent chats, we um, like to you know, we, we we definitely try our best to, to roll things out um, the right way. Um, that is all we have for questions. Uh, all right, guys. So uh, there you have it. They actually uh, got to my question. That was uh, pretty nice of them. <laughs> I didn't think they were gonna do it, but. Uh, Ended ended the telegram with the best question asked by the best podcast in, crypt, in cryptocurrency. Uh, and we're going to end it there. This one's getting pretty freaking long. So uh, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> and uh, as always, guys, please make sure you're uh, subscribed to the channel for more updates on Emacs. As well as other stocks and tokens we like. And I thank you guys so much for watching this far. And I'll see you in the next video.